The year was 1975. I love music, I love singing. And the song was Shame, Shame, Shame. Bang, overnight, man. We're touring the world. Signing all these autographs, you know, people crazy screaming, you know, being in front of 10,000 people. See how stardom nearly led the singer to suicide. That was emptier than ever. On today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, good morning and welcome to the show. Life can be very messy, so it's easy to feel like there's no hope. Thankfully, it's possible to take a mess and change it into a masterpiece. Watch this. I've heard it. You've heard it. It's time for a new beginning. Time to start a fresh page or paint a new picture with our life. Sounds great in theory but it can seem impossible. Life is messy. The lines have gotten blurred. Maybe we just don't know where to start. We look at the canvas of our lives and see mistake after mistake after mistake. It's overwhelming. When I look at my life with these messy lines and scribbles, it makes me think, is this as good as it gets? There's no eraser that can make this life make sense. But what if? What if there was someone that could make sense of our mess? They could take all our scribbles, all our mistakes, all our missed opportunities, and make them into a masterpiece. And then I remember there is Jesus he gives us a new life every day is new every day is a blank canvas full of possibility and promise he takes our canvases our lives that have been filled up with shortcomings secrets tragedies and embarrassments and he helps them make sense when I look at the canvas of my life and I see nothing but disorder and chaos, I have to remember this. God is not a God of disorder. He's a God of peace. And you know what? He wants to take my hand and bring peace to the canvas of my life. So as we seek to make our mark, let us give God all our scribbles, all our mistakes, all our hurts, and trust that he will turn our messy lives into a masterpiece, his masterpiece. That's the key is to give it all to him. If you hold on to it, he can change it. But when you give it to him, that's when he can work the miracle. Well, thanks to the Skit Guys for that video. And you can see more of their great work at skitguys.com. Well, Jason Alvarez's life changed overnight when the song Shame, Shame, Shame became a huge hit in the 70s. Suddenly his dreams of money and fame were all fulfilled, but the real shame was it left him more empty than ever. It was 1975 when Shirley and Company topped the charts with Shame, Shame, Shame. The song had been an instant hit, thrusting singer Jason Alvarez into stardom. It was nothing that I expected. It was the total opposite. I was emptier than ever. Jason was 10 when his family fled Castro's Cuba and moved to the projects of New Jersey. As a poor minority, he was treated like he was second rate. His pride led him to take matters into his own hands. Gangs and people pressing you and challenging you, I was not used to that. I made up my mind nobody was going to push me around anymore. To prove his worth, he formed a gang as a young teenager. Even then, he still felt life was miserable. But there was one thing that gave him joy. I was always into music since I was a little boy. I loved music. I loved singing. But Jason never considered music as his ticket out, until one day, a couple of musicians overheard him singing. We love the way you sing, man. We're gonna start a group in two weeks. 
but you have to play an instrument. Jason asked his father to buy a guitar. I said, I'm really going in the wrong direction with my life, and I will come out of this. I know that that's what I love to do is sing, you know. My father bought me the guitar. Jason joined the group and eventually left the gang life. I fell in love with music and I started doing weddings and, and some nightclubs. By 21, Jason was married to Gail and pursuing music full time. He released his own album and eventually signed with Platinum Records. But that didn't fill the growing emptiness. I started doing drugs. I just, um, somebody kind of turned me on to marijuana and then uh, I started doing LSD. He was at the studio one day when a producer was struggling to find the right voice for a song. She asked Jason to do a take. And I see the people inside the studio going crazy, you know? And so she says, Jay, that was great. I said, I'm ready to sing it now. She goes, sing it. She said, man, we already took it. That take was amazing. Come inside and listen to it. That song was shame, shame, shame. Bang, overnight, man. We're touring the world. Jason was quickly caught up in his celebrity. Signing all these autographs, you know, people crazy screaming, you know, being in front of 10,000 people. That became my life and that became my God. With that lifestyle came more drug abuse, which eventually caused his wife to ask for separation. Even then, he felt like he was on top of the world. Then one day, while he and another musician were smoking pot, he asked Jason a question that shattered his illusion. He said, man, is this all there is to life? And then I realized that that wasn't really what my heart had been searching for. Jason became depressed and at times contemplated suicide. Life became just, uh, I was just existing. There was a hole in my heart that money, drugs, women, success, hit records couldn't fill, man. Eventually the song dropped off the charts and the tour came to an end. It was then Jason decided to make amends with his wife. By now, Gail had become a Christian and agreed to try to work things out. He never considered her faith for himself until he took her to church one day and felt drawn to go inside. I heard the gospel preached for the first time in my life, and God just kind of spoke directly to me. Intrigued, Jason went back the following Sunday. This guy starts preaching. And he says, there is somebody here if you would like the opportunity that God has been dealing with. And today, you need to give your life to Jesus. I'm sitting back there, man, I'm thinking to myself, it's crazy, you know? And then the thought hit me, you have done everything. You've tried everything. Why, why don't you do this? Jason made his way down to the altar and prayed to receive Jesus Christ as his savior. When that guy said that sinner's prayer, man, I said it from the depths of my soul. And when I got done praying, I could tell you this, the long search, that long search, man, that long search had come to an end. That hole, had finally had the peace that was missing put in. Jason knew at once that he was changed. He stopped doing drugs and began restoring his relationship with Gail. He also started making Christian music. Today, Jason and Gail pastor the Love of Jesus Church in New Jersey. And of course, he's still making music. God said this to me, if you will just hold on to my hand and not let go, I will walk you through every dark place in your life and bring you to the other side. He'll do the same for you. Maybe you've got that hole. Maybe you're asking the same question. Is this all there is? Is there anything more to life? Is, is this all I do? God put eternity in your heart and he put it there for the purpose of having a relationship with you. And he knew 
that the only thing that would fill that would be you. Uh, it would be him. That would be the only thing that could possibly fill that, that, that eternity that is in your heart. You can't fill it with fame. You can't fill it with money. You can't fill it with success. You can't. It only gets filled with him. Our souls are restless. We wander until we find rest in him. If you want that, if you want to know a relationship with your maker, here's the good news for you. God had a dream. In his dream, he wanted you and I, wanted Adam and Eve to live in a garden together. And in the cool of the evening, he would come down and talk with them. That was his dream. He wanted to provide for them. He wanted to be their God. He hasn't given up on that dream. He still wants that. He still wants to come to you and talk with you and just spend time with you. That's what he wants. What does it take to believe that he hasn't given up on that? That we messed it up, we walked away, and then Jesus came and he said, I'll take care of all of that. I'll pay the penalty. I'll, I'll die on the cross. And he didn't stop there. He rose again from the grave. All for you. All you have to do to get this wonderful gift, this good news, is to say, yes, that's for me. So bow your head with me. Let's pray a prayer. Just as Jason prayed a prayer, you pray a prayer. And you'll get the same result. Jesus wants to come to you. He wants to fill that eternity in your heart. Let's pray. Jesus. That's right. Just say it out loud. Jesus. I come to you. And Jesus, I ask that you come into my heart. I ask that you make me new again. I ask that you fill up that emptiness, that longing deep within me. So Jesus, I open my heart. I ask that you come in. I ask that you forgive me and set me free. And Jesus, I want to follow you all the days of my life. Hear my prayer. For I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, for those who prayed, I ask that you cleanse them, that you forgive them of all of their sins, and ask that you fill them to overflowing with your Holy Spirit. Do it now, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed with me, there's one more thing I want you to do. I want you to pick up the phone and make a, a, a call and say, I prayed with that guy on TV. Number's toll free, 888-777-1999. And when you call, uh, I've got something for you. And it's called A New Day. It's a, it's a packet, absolutely free. And there's a CD teaching of what do you do now? How do you live the Christian life? There's also a booklet with Bible verses, the phone call, the packet, all of it is free. Do it now, 888-777-1999. Well, still ahead, we're going to be praying for you and your needs, but first, a mother fights for her daughter's life. When you have a child that has this kind of problem, you have to go to warfare for them. It's a battle. See how she won the battle right after this. If you look at Amy Lambert today, you would never guess that she was once holed up in a crack motel on the verge of dying. Amy's now a healthy, vibrant young woman, thanks to the power of prayer. I remember when I found out she was shooting up. That was such a dark moment for me. And I remember I was driving down the road, I even remember where I was. <laughs> the Lord spoke to me through a song that was playing on the radio and said, 
you can trust me. I started using drugs when I was 12 years old. Um, it came through my parents' divorce. I turned away from the Lord, turned away from church. I was very deceptive. I deceived my family to thinking, I'm just going for a nice sleepover at my girlfriend's house. But we would go over there and I was introduced to hard drugs, marijuana, pain pills, cocaine. She hid it very, very well because I checked up on her, I checked her room, I did all the things that moms do. When After I graduated from high school, I basically went out on the streets. It was a really hard time in my life, and you know, not knowing where Amy was at, you know, what was going on in her heart. It was, you know, my mother's heart was crying. I'll never forget, um, you know, being at a friend's house one night, the people that I were with, they said, you know, if you shoot it up, you'll feel it a lot more. And I made a decision that, that night to, to inject and I was instantly addicted to the needle. My drug of choice was Oxycontin. I continued uh, meeting drug dealers, started selling, and through that, my addiction got to the level where I was injecting 20, 30 times a day, and lived in crack houses, heroin houses, out on the streets, abandoned buildings, um, and just, it consumed my life. You know, when you have a child that has this kind of problem, you have to go to warfare for them. It's a battle. And, you know, every day it was my mission in life. And I was not going to receive no for an answer. I knew I wasn't. <laughs> and I know that God is able and he's, he's a big God. One night the Lord woke my mom up. He woke me and, you know, told me to go now. It was urgent, go now, intercede for Amy. And he said, now, pray as your seed break the power of this addiction over her life. After that prayer, it was like the Holy Spirit was on me. <laughs> I would be out random places and God just started sending strangers up to me and telling me the same thing over and over. God loves you. He has a future for you. He has a hope for you. And the Lord really used that to soften my heart. During this time period, I was also talking to my brother a lot on the phone, and I was pouring my heart out to him, and he invited me to go to church with him. And I remember sitting in that service, and my heart was beating out of my chest. After the service was over, again, this lady walks up to me, and she says, the Lord told me to come and tell you that that service was for you. She gave me her phone number and said, if you ever need me, give me a call. God was really speaking in my heart. I didn't know how to respond to it, so I continued with my addiction. The most important thing is don't ever, ever, ever give up. No matter how dark it gets, how bad it looks, don't, do not give up. I was laying in the bed and I heard mom, I, a really distressed mom, and there was no Amy, so I knew that Amy was in distress somehow. And so I got up and began to pray for her. Well, that exact night, I was in this little crack motel and I shot up so many times I didn't remember. I drank a bottle of liquor by myself. And at some point during the night, I shot up and completely missed the vein in my arm. I received a phone call about five in the morning from her uh, saying, Mom, I'm in trouble and come and get me. My arm had abscessed and had swelled up the size of a grapefruit. And I'll never forget you know, I'm waiting for her to come and pick me up. I was in such severe pain because of the abscess in my arm, but I was still injecting in the other arm because I physically needed that to survive. So I had to go pick up my daughter and uh, take her to the hospital. They almost had to amputate my arm because of the abscess, but they were able to save it. And they pulled my family in a room and told my family that of the stages of drug addiction that I was at the last stage before death and to prepare for my funeral. And I remembered that lady from the church said, I want you to call her and tell her that I'm ready to talk to somebody. And so she came and she began to pray. God used her to speak things into my life that there's no way she could have known about. And I broke, I started bawling. And she said, Amy, are you ready? Are you ready to surrender your life to Christ? And she said, yes. So we all witnessed it. You know, the whole family was there. I was changed from the inside out. And even though the physical addiction was still there, I changed on the inside. And so it wasn't an instantaneous 
deliverance for me. I went to Mercy Ministries and that's where I was in the program for a year. That's where I really, you know, went through intensive counseling and, you know, was able to overcome the addiction. My passion is for the lost. He's called me to be an evangelist. And my heart is for those that are just like I used to be. Nothing else that could be said except that it's a miracle. Because in reality, she shouldn't be alive. When people look at me now, they cannot imagine that I came from that lifestyle. But I tell them, you know, I have the scar that still remains, the scars on my arm. To walk up to people and say to them, you know, I, I was strung out, I was addicted, but the Lord brought me out. He can do the same thing for you. There's such power in that. There is such power, the power of testimony, the power of what Jesus has done for you and the power of prayer. Well, there was a praying mom that was praying people all around her and what seemed impossible from the world standpoint, from a medical standpoint, the last stages all became a wonderful testimony. What a wonderful turnaround. Well, we're 700 Club Interactive and we want to pray for you and we've gotten some prayer requests on our Facebook page. If you'd like to write on there, all you've got to do is just post it. Barbara writes in, my granddaughter, is a drug addict. Her entire life is a mess, and I just don't know what to do to help her anymore. I'm at my wit's end. Please pray for her. And then Robert says, my life is falling apart. I struggle with numerous addictions, and I don't know how to stop. I know the Lord, and I want to serve him 100%, but just can't break this cycle. Please pray for me. Well, let's join in prayer for these. And let's, uh, let's create a great circle of prayer. And we saw what happened when people started praying for Amy. That can happen for these. It can happen for the loved ones in your life. We can change things through prayer. Prayer works. Let's pray. Lord, we just lift these people to you right now and for this granddaughter who's lost in drugs. We just ask for witnesses after your own heart to go to her and let her know that you love her, that you came for her, that you want to set her free, you want to redeem her. So Lord, we ask for that. We ask for people to just approach her and say, God loves you. God can set you free from this. You can have a hope, you can have a future. And for Robert, we just ask that the power of this addiction be broken over his life now. You're able to change his innermost being and take away even the memory of any desire. And so we ask that that be removed from him now in Jesus' name and that he be placed in a safe place where he can recover and go on to serve you 100%. And for those who are crying out for loved ones, for those who, parents, grandparents who are at their wit's end, don't know where to go, be the God of all comfort to them right now and let them know that you have the answer. You are the answer. Bless them with this, Lord God, and answer the desire of their heart, for we ask it. In Jesus' name, amen. If you need prayer, we're here for you. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call us, 888-777-1999. Still ahead, a story of hope in the midst of hardship. I am always hungry, but I try not to complain. I wish I could help my aunt more. I feel sorry for her because she works very hard, but we still don't have enough food. See how we made this aunt's burden much lighter when we come back. Aunt Nim is an elderly widow who works hard to support her nine-year-old niece. Many nights, she feels sad and discouraged because there's only enough food to feed one of them. Every day, Aunt Nim faced a difficult decision. Should she buy rice for dinner or use the extra 25 cents to pay for her niece's daily school fees? I never went to school. So I want straight to get an education for a good future. 
Aunt Nim has been a widow for 30 years. In spite of the financial challenges, she took in her nine-year-old niece, Srey, after the girl's mother abandoned her. I am always hungry, but I try not to complain. I wish I could help my aunt more. I feel sorry for her because she works very hard, but we still don't have enough food. Now Aunt Nim doesn't have to choose between food and school for Srey, because CBN's Orphan's Promise helped with both problems. First, we started a lunch program in the church near their home. Orphan's Promise also gave Srey a uniform and paid her modest school fees, just $55 for an entire year. Finally, to help Aunt Nim bring in a little extra money, we gave her a pig to start a small livestock business. I am so happy. Soon I will have piglets to sell. Thank you very much, CBN, for making my burden light. Meanwhile, at the lunch program at the church, Srey is learning something else about Jesus. I learned about God's Word and that Jesus loves me very much. Thank you, CBN, for telling me about Jesus and helping my family. And thank you. If you're a member of the 700 Club, you're part of that. If you're not a member, I invite you to join us. Be part of all that we do around the world. If you want to see the gospel preached around the world, join the 700 Club. If you want to see people helped around the world, join the 700 Club. Just call us, 888-777-1999. How much is it? Just $20 a month. When you call and join, I want you to have this. It's my father's latest teaching. It's called Heaven what God has prepared for those who love him. If you've got questions about what happens to Christians uh, when they die, will Christians be judged for their sins? That question is answered on this wonderful DVD. Plus, there are testimonies of people who have died, who have gone to heaven, and they come back and share what happened to them. If you want it, just join, the, join with us. I want you to have it, 888-777-1999. That's all the time we have. We leave you this word from Ephesians. We are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago.